Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we have an important topic to discuss, the volatile keyword. In this video, we will simplify the concept, explore a real world issue and demonstrate how volatile keyword can be used to solve that particular issue. In case you have missed any of the previous videos, please check it out from the playlist link given in the description. Also, if you want to access any specific section of the video, like you want to skip some initial discussion part, then you can access the implementation chapter from the chapter list given below. Now, without any further delay, let's start. Before we get into the volatile keyword, let's understand why concurrency is crucial in Java. Concurrency allows multiple threads to execute in parallel, making our Java application faster and more efficient. However, concurrency is no silver bullet. It can introduce some serious challenges as well. One of the common issues in concurrent programming is data visibility. Imagine we have two threads, thread 1 and thread 2 both accessing a shared variable flag. Thread1 sets the flag value to true and thread2 reads the flag value. However, due to CPU caching and optimization, thread2 might not see the updated value of flag that can cause the synchronization issues. That means thread1 has already updated the flag variable value to true but that is not written to the memory yet. So in that case, thread 2 will not be able to see the latest updated value of flag variable. This is where volatile keyword comes to the rescue. It guarantees the visibility of variable changes across the threads. In a multi-threaded application, each thread may copy the variables from main memory into CPU registers while working on them for performance reasons. If your computer contains more than one CPU, then each thread may run on different CPU as well. That means each thread may copy the variable into CPU registers of different CPUs. With non-volatile variables, there is no guarantee about when the JVM will actually read the main memory and store the details in CPU registers or write the data from CPU registers back to main memory. This can cause several problems. Imagine a situation in which two threads have access to a shared object which contains a counter variable. Let's say that only thread1 is updating the value of count but both thread1 and thread2 read the value of count many times. Now as count is non-volatile, there is no guarantee about when the value of count variable will be written back to the memory. This means that count variable value in CPU registers may not be same as what is available in the memory. The problem is threads unable to see the latest value of variable because it has not yet been written back to the memory by the updating thread. This particular problem is known as visibility problem. The volatile keyword addresses the visibility problem by declaring the counter variable volatile all writes and reads to that counter variable that will be directly from the main memory so it will not be taken from the cpu registers now let us see a code example without volatile and check out what exactly is the issue Now here we have one static variable flag which is of type boolean and then we have in the main method two different threads. So the first thread we have is a writer thread which is responsible for doing some processing and updating the flag value to true. In this to mimic the processing we are making the thread to sleep for some time and after that we are setting the value of flag to true. The second thread that we have is a reader thread. This thread is only reading the value of flag variable. 
Flag variable is a shared resource between writer and reader thread. To wait for flag value to become true, we have added a while loop which will just do a busy spinning until the value of flag is set to true. Busy spinning means it will not perform any action but it will keep on occupying the CPU that is known as busy spinning. And in the end it will just print that flag is set to true and it is exiting. That will only happen once the second thread is able to read the value of flag as true. For both of these threads, we have used a constructor of thread class that uh, takes input as one as runnable and second parameter as name of the thread. So we have given writer and reader as names of these two threads respectively. So just to summarize, we have two threads, writer thread that sets the flag to true after a delay and a reader thread that keeps checking the flag in a loop until it becomes true. Now without use of volatile, there is no guarantee that the changes made by writer thread in this particular line where it is setting the flag to true will be immediately visible to the reader thread. As a result, reader thread may spin indefinitely as well even though writer thread has already updated the flag to true. Uh, let me just execute this code then we will be able to observe the output. So here we can see that writer thread has done the processing and updated the flag to true as well. But reader thread did not read the updated value and as discussed earlier the reader thread may spin indefinitely. So the program is still running and reader thread is only executing this particular while loop again and again because it is not able to get the updated flag value. Now let's uh, fix this issue by making the flag variable volatile. By adding the volatile keyword to the flag variable, we ensure that changes to the flag made by one thread are immediately visible to the other thread. This guarantees visibility and the reader thread will correctly exit once the writer thread actually sets the value to true. Now let us execute and see if using the volatile keyword has fixed this particular issue. Here we can see the visibility issue is fixed by making the variable volatile. So far our scenario where one thread modifies the variable and other thread reads it but never modifies it then declaring that particular variable volatile is enough to guarantee the visibility for second thread. But if both the threads are trying to modify the variable value, then by just adding volatile will not be enough. Now in the end, let's try to understand the performance impact of using volatile keyword. Reading from and writing to the main memory is more expensive and slower than accessing the CPU resistors. We should only use volatile variables when you really need them. Overuse of volatile keyword can impact your application performance really bad. So that was it for the volatile keyword. In the next video, we'll try to come up with some more interesting concepts from multithreading. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you find it useful, please don't forget to give us a like. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning.